you brought up a question. I, I, I wanted to circle back to dietary composition because you've done so much work on that. But that what you just said brought up a, a question in my mind about cholesterol, the microbiome having an independent effect on cholesterol. Um, you know, we do we do know that genetics plays a role as well. But do you know? Is that have you have you or any of your colleagues? looked into the mechanism for that or multiple, I guess, probably multiple mechanisms. I'm kind of thinking along the lines of even just inflammation um, and how, you know, when there's an inflammatory response, you know, you know, cholesterol is kind of produced, like that's kind of a well-known thing is that you should always have an, at least an N of two when you're getting your cholesterol levels measured, because, you know, if you have some sort of stressful event or something that's causing inflammation, or if you're sick, you can have, you know, high cholesterol levels and that's not necessarily indicative of what is your know, your cholesterol levels are you're absolutely right and and uh, i can tell you um that we and several other groups have uh, reproducibly found that uh, different aspects of healthy cholesterol and uh, fatty acid metabolism in humans and in mice are modulated by the gut microbiome so for example in the personalized nutrition project and in interventional trials that were followed as part of this project, we found that modification of the personalized nutritional uh, um, recommendations could lead to an improvement in HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. Um, another group from the UK um, um, conducted a very ambitious uh, follow-up trial uh, similar to the personalized nutrition project, uh, which we started with, uh, called the PREDICT trial. And in this trial, they could show something very exciting, which is that the microbiome and the host um, could use to predict a person's triglyceride levels. In other words, not only did they associate the microbes to uh, features of, of uh, fatty acid metabolism or uh, triglycerides, which, which are one of the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, they could use data coming from the microbiome in order to predict a person's levels of, of uh, triglycerides which provides another stronger proof to the possible causal association between the two features. Do you think that some of the confounding factors in the many, many studies that have been done, for example, on saturated fat and, you know, the role of saturated fat in cardiovascular disease risk or in certain biomarkers that indicate cardiovascular disease risk, like high cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, for example, do you think that you know there's there are conflicting there's conflicting data where it's it's not always bad but it it does seem to be bad so um, is there a microbiome component like in 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 the way your body responds to saturated fat? I, I, I think that you know the, the specific answer is I don't know but the conceptual answer is that in every study that we look or conduct we find that um, inter individual differences in the microbiome could play a role and potentially explain variabilities between studies in their outcomes, even if they seemingly do the same thing and reach different conclusions. Um, and I can give you endless examples. Uh, for example, our own uh, um, studies on non-nutritive sweeteners or artificial sweeteners uh, um, suggested that the microbiome is a very major player that modifies uh, the response of some people, but not of, of other people um, into some of, of the nutrients. And, and if you look at the body of evidence suggesting that nutrients adversely or favorably impact the human body, you know, it's all over the place. And, and, and the results are very conflicting with each other and people, you know, spend their career fighting with each other while some of the explanations could lie within inter-individual variabilities in their physiology, including ones that are related to their microbiome. 